prepare yourself for some tech news. And I'm talking to you, Keith. Keith, who felt like he didn't have to go to the bathroom, but now that I'm bringing it up, he kinda does. Well, there's no time because Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co, or TSMC, is going to invest $25 billion in the development of five nanometer chip technology. This will allow them to keep their exclusive deal with Apple to supply the A-series chips for the iPhones and iPads of the future. Five nanometer production is expected to start in 2020, but for now, they are ramping up commercial production on their seven nanometer node, dismissing that there were <coughs> problems getting their uh, mass production up to speed. By the end of the year, TSMC expects to be producing over 50 different seven nanometer chips, including Apple's shiny new A12, as well as processors for AMD, Nvidia, Qualcomm, and Bitmain. Be connect! Really, the only company that seems to be missing from that list is Intel, who are still trying to get 10 nanometer to stick. But at least they still have the fastest consumer CPUs on the market, right? 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 Well, not if AMD has anything to say about it. The Threadripper 2990X is, allegedly, a 32 core, 64 thread processor that AMD showed off at Computex without any mention of clock speed. But now, a leak from a Chinese source shows the exact specifications of Threadripper 2, including Cinebench scores. And if these are true, it's gonna be one hell of a chip. Not like hell like hot. I mean, I mean, it'll probably run hot. You know what, I'm rolling with it. One hell of a chip. Apparently, the Threadripper 2990X will have a base speed of three gigahertz, an all-core underload frequency of 3.4, and it'll extended frequency range XFR up to 4.2. And when overclocked, it's expected to do about 4.1-ish on all cores with liquid cooling and allegedly hit 6,399 points in Cinebench. That's like, four and a half 8700Ks all going at once. Needless to say, this thing will be a rendering beast and, yes, back to uh, the heat. It'll have a 250 watt TDP, which is exactly why AMD and Cooler Master announced a freshly redesigned Wraith Ripper cooler, which should be more than enough for stock speeds, but <laughs> even that, Probably not enough to overclock this thing. The most important thing about it though is that it has addressable RGB lighting, since if Cinebench scores don't uh, get your motor running, flashing lights probably will. <laughs> Samsung has started production of an eight terabyte SSD sporting 16 512 gig packages on a new NF1 SSD form factor. Samsung first showed these off in March with eight and 16 terabyte drives shown, but now, they're actually coming to market? At first, it was thought that the PCI Express 4.0 interface would be used, meaning that only supercomputers like the IBM Power 9 could use it. But Samsung has clarified that it will be using the pedestrian PCI Express 3.0 X4 interface. Well, that's not to take away from how insanely fast these things are. There's expected to be a 12 gigabyte DRAM buffer on them. I mean, that is more memory than many gamers have in their whole system. These drives will be aimed at large data sets and virtualization servers with a 2U rack being able to house up to 72 of them for over half a petabyte of storage in like no more than this tall. At this point, there has been no mention of pricing, but we can assume that if you have to ask, then you probably can't afford one. And now on to backquats. Brought to you by ourselves, specifically LTX 2018, our meetup and tech event coming up on July 14th, 2018 at the Richmond Olympic Oval here in beautiful British Columbia. If you trust what it says on our license plates, it's beautiful. Anyway, meet the Linus Tech Tips team and participate in everything from a cable management challenge to a LAN tournament to trying VR if you haven't yet to even experiencing 12K gaming. And that's only a small amount of what's on offer, so come out and see us. Tickets are just 35 Canadian loonies, which I, I think is about like four American nickels, something like that. And you can buy them at the link below or at ltxexpo.com. 
Valve has released its new Knuckles VR controllers, which should allow you to precisely manipulate objects in VR. Every finger is tracked with a combination of capacitive touch and force sensors, allowing users to virtually touch or even crush objects in the virtual world. The Knuckles are expected to ship soon, certainly a lot sooner than Xbox VR or a Sonic game that anyone cares about. Back in 2016, Phil Spencer announced that the Xbox Scorpio would support high-end VR, and that they were in works with Oculus to make the virtual dream come true. But now they have admitted that there are no longer any plans for virtual reality. I doubt anyone is that surprised because it's just not that powerful. And uh, the second that Phil says something will be a feature for the X-Bone, like Kinect, DRM policies, or good first party games, it's basically a kiss of death. In what's maybe not a kiss of death so much as a kiss of, I don't know, resignation, Intel CEO Brian Krasanich will be stepping down after having a consensual relationship with one of his employees. That fraternizing bad boy. Intel's chief financial officer, Robert Swan, will be stepping in in the meantime. And this news hasn't appeared so far to have a large effect on Intel stock prices, meaning that that uh, $23,000 a day salary that he was collecting back in 2017 may not have been fully justified. If no one cares, he's gone. After announcing on Wednesday that Facebook will be integrating auto-playing ads into their Messenger app, they have gone one step further now by announcing that they will be testing paid subscriptions to private groups. This will give group admins a way to make money by engaging with their group. But with some of them getting as high as $30 a month, I have a hard time figuring out how any Facebook group could possibly be worth shelling out that kind of cash for. If you really need access to your paid group though, you now can do so from the Chinese province of Hainan. What is that transition? Where the Chinese government plans to lift some internet censorship to make it a more popular destination for tourism. Giving visitors access to websites like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Although ironically, users in China that have commented on the plan have been censored. So so um, comment down below and let us know what you think about this. And finally, Nvidia has joined the giveaway train, tossing 20 CEO edition Titan Vs to AI researchers. The card is basically a regular Titan V, but this time with a whopping 32 gigabytes of VRAM. There's nothing to not like about this, except that I didn't get one. Jensen, come on, toss me some love here. And you guys can toss me some love with that like button and uh, welcome back, Keith. You thought you could use the washroom during that sponsor break, but you were wrong. Invest in diapers. That's what I've been doing at my advanced age. Wow. <laughs> Subscribe for more apparently burns on Linus. Hate you all, especially you and you, Keith. <laughs>